things. One, I want to thank Sister Anissa for her presentation. And I was just telling Brother Yusuf, you know, it's very interesting when you remove yourself from a setting to a more objective position, you hear differently. And so um, I really want to thank Sister Anissa because people were really being challenged by her presentation. And I could tell by the Q&A. You know, I'm sitting listening psychologically to the Q&A. You could hear people's habits being challenged. Yeah, you know, because you could tell some questions have like a little attitude, like. <laughs> you, could, you could hear people's knowledge base. Huh. You know, in, in any lecture, that authentically challenges us is good for us. You know, so we, we thank Allah uh, for that. So uh, we're gonna move, uh, try to move right along. Um, over about the past 10 to 20 years, there has been a growing body of work about what is referred to as uh, quote unquote African American Islam. And what's meant by that, you hear that phrase African American Islam. It's not that we have Islam different than somebody else. What is meant by that is the phenomena of the growth and acceptance of Islam in the African American community, in the black American community, in the sociological, political, economic dynamic of the black American community, which is very important. You know, just like if Islam started catching on, say, in the Native American community, the way that it has historically caught on in the black American community, all the social scientists would be studying that. Oh, hmm, what is that? How did that happen? And, and, and what are the dynamics of moving from the Native American past into Islam. I mean, they would be going crazy. Oh, man. Okay? So there are people who understand that the particular dynamic and circumstances of the black American community is different from everybody else in America. You know, like once, what year was that? 1990, I think it was. 89, 90. I was at a meeting of Muslims the Muslim World League convened a meeting of imams from all over America. I, well, I was there. Everybody from Imam Mubarakadi Muhammad, Rahmatullahi, to Imam Jamil, to uh, Imam Siraj. I mean, it was just everybody was there. And uh, even Minister Farrakhan was there. So, uh, at one point, I forget how it happened, but Imam Warfadi Muhammad, may Allah have mercy on him and reward him with Jannah. He was speaking and he said, and he was um, referencing some of those original NOI uh, teachings. You know, when people was feeling him, you know, the whole room, and there was a lot of immigrants in the room, a lot of them. And he said, and people kind of chuckled, yeah, yeah, Imam, we, we know, you know. And then he said, and his, he had a, Imam Muhammad had very subtle sense of humor. And he said, yeah, but, uh, he said, black people in America, he said, we didn't invent that stuff. 
he said. He said, uh, that was brought to us from overseas, he said. And the whole world, especially the immigrants, who were mostly Southern Asian and Arab, they were like, yeah, hey, mom, you got us. And I never forget, I never forget the moment. So, but yet and still, most of the books that are written about Islam in the black American community, most of the books in academia, most of the books on Amazon, most of those books talk about Islam in the black community only, only from the perspective of the Morris Science Temple of America, the Nation of Islam, and its derivatives. Yes, sir. I often say, because pe people who are students of Imam Warfidi Muhammad, rahmatullah, they, they know me very well. And I, you know, I go to conferences, everybody knows me. They, they be trying to put me <laughs> as a product. No, 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 brother, I wasn't that. <laughs> okay? And I, I'm at a point now where I can say to them with love and do, you know, a critique I have about your community, I say to them. Y'all don't know anything about Islam in America except through the prism of your own experience as a community. And all you have to do is talk to them. They never heard of Sheikh Daoud, right? Not too loud, they, I mean, the average NOI evolved into the Sunnah, brother or sister, never heard of Sheikh Daoud, never heard of Mother Khadija, you know, uh, never heard of the Islamic party never heard of the Dal Islam movement. Maybe they heard about MIB, maybe. You know, it's a loving critique. And so I say to, to folk that if you're gonna study the development of Islam in the black American community, that there's certain phenomena, certain movements that you have, you have to study about. Because everybody wasn't in the Nation of Islam. Everybody didn't have those beliefs. Everybody didn't make that particular evolution. And at the same time, you know, uh, you know the east side of the black American community, that uh, there was, you know, uh, uh, the, uh, Malcolm X, and, Muhammad Ali and all of our other heroes, you know, it, because that community in OI evolved into this, produce authentic African American heroes and sheroes. And um, so, but at the same time, you had that, you had, I'll just use an easily identifiable name. So you had like Kareem Abdul Jabbar. Who is, who is uh, one thing I love about him is he's, uh, other than being the greatest NBA scorer in history, what I love about him is he has now evolved into a public intellectual, which I think is phenomenal. Went from being an athlete into a quote unquote public intellectual who's respected. I mean, who, who's respected. So now, and, and at the same time, in Harlem, at the same time that Minister Farrakhan was the minister at Mosque number seven, and uh, NOI was running the Yorubas and other people out of town, I'm just gonna say it like it is, <laughs> okay? Um, so at that same time, the Mosque of Islamic Brotherhood was making its mark and impact on Islam in Harlem and the psyche of people in Harlem. Now we're at a point where young 
female Americans of European descent are doing tours, walking tours in Harlem, history of Islam in Harlem. Well, like, this is the truth. And they and they walk in, you know, it's like I, I, one day I thought about it, I said, dang, it's the blind leading the blind. Because, you know, they walking people around, taking them up to the five percenters place, walking them by Malcolm Shabazz, they're just walking by it, nothing, yeah, you know, and saying, this is the history of Islam in Harlem. And other people are looking like, this really is the blind leading the blind. You really don't know how Islam was established in Harlem. You listen to bigoted people who talk about Harlem. One day I'm reading some bigoted posts. And uh, <laughs> this one person said, ah, they might as well change Harlem from Harlem to uh, uh, Harlem, Harlem is stand. They said, there's so many Muslims, you know, like it's like Afghanistan being in, there, being in here. One day I, I was riding in a taxi cab. I noticed the cab driver looking at me in the rearview mirror. So he says, excuse me, sir. Uh, he says with a thick Latino accent. He says, uh, mind if I ask you a question? I said, no, go, go ahead, brother. He said, Harlem, Harlem is like some kind of a Muslim village, huh? He says to me, you know. So I laugh, I chuckle, and I said, well, why do you ask that? He says to me, driving, you know, this is like a New York story, you know. So he drives, look, he said, well, because I drive cab in Harlem. He said, every Friday, he said, Harlem gets transformed into the Muslim village. He said, I'm looking at all these people. He said, men, they dress like you dress. And the women got on the long scarves on their head. So I figured this must be the Muslim village. This is what the cab driver said to me, who was Christian. So I said, well, yes, it is. I said, yeah. OK. So now I mention those things because today we're about to be blessed with a lecture on the Dal Islam movement. And the Dal Islam movement and a study of it is critical to looking at the phenomena of the growth and development of Islam in the black American community. Anybody that talks about Islam and black America doesn't know anything about the Dal Islam movement, your knowledge is incomplete. You start looking at the black American Muslim community uh, it's from the mid 20th century forward and not knowing about Dal Islam movement, the Islamic party in North America, the mosque of Islamic Brotherhood, that would be like looking at Islam in America and the black community in the early 20th century and not knowing anything about, for instance, the Ahmadiyya movement, where, where people who were African Americans converting to Islam from like 1910 or something like that up through the 40s and 50s, they were impacted by the, by the Ahmadiyya movement. You know, the jazz musicians who became Muslims, that's Ahmadiyya Dawah. The, uh, 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 the members of the UNIA, Uni uh, Universal Negro Improvement Association, led by the 
Honorable Marcus Garvey, they were influenced by Ahmadiyya uh, 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 Dawa. The, the, and, and many people who later became members of the Nation of Islam were influenced by Ahmadiyya Dawa, even to the point now where there's speculation in academic circles that uh, Farad Muhammad was the Ahmadiyya at first. You know, you have to know, I don't know, Allah knows best. But I'm saying that there's not just people writing papers about this sort of thing. And so uh, the value of tonight's lecture, and I was just telling, uh, I was talking to our brother, uh, Dr. Uh, Mayor Al-Islam, a few days ago, who's in, uh, living in Abu Dhabi, but those of us who know uh, Dr. Amir and know about his history as a Muslim. So I was telling him that I just received a book that I ordered through Amazon about the Islamic party. I just got it, just got, took it out the mail, loved it, wow, look at this. And so, the, but there's a tremendous value in that people who are writing books now are people who are the products of the, you know, so, uh, so we have uh, uh, Brother Mahmoud here. He has a book. Now he was, uh, he's a product of the Dalai Islam movement. And he wrote a book about it. So I have his book. <laughs> I have, well, he doesn't have one yet, but the, the lecture by tonight, uh, that's being given tonight on the Dalai Islam movement is by Imam Khalil, Abdul Kabir. He was in the Dalai Islam movement. He's a product of it. And so these are the people who were there, the people who had the experiences, the people who uh, uh, know what took place. You know, just like, I'm not trying to sound blasphemous, but it's just like in the history of Christianity, you had, say, uh, the Gospels, who were written by people who weren't there. And they became the, the, the prime reference for what Jesus, the son of Mary, or the son of said and did. And these are people who weren't there. Then you had somebody like Barnabas, who was, not only was he there, but he kept the minutes for the disciples. He was the secretary, he's the scribe. And so, in the church, they, and the Catholic Church started this, they disregard <laughs> the minutes and reference writings by people who weren't even there. And say, well, this, 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 this is how it happened. So it is with our community, the black American Muslim community. So you have people who are not from that community writing about us. Uh, they want to say this and that. And that would be like somebody writing about, say, MIB. They never spoke to Sister Halima. Never spoke to me. Never spoke to Sister Muhammad or Sister Lahina or Abdul Latif Zaid. And then they become authorities on MIB. <laughs> you understand? So we are thankful to have Khalil Abdul Kabir to talk to us about the Dal Islam movement. The Dal Islam movements, like other movements of its time, came about as the result of an evolution, and he's going to talk about that, the origins of it. As I started studying Islam in the black American community, I found that there were what I refer to as quote unquote mother mosques, mother masajid, who would then give birth to other uh, Masajid, okay? So, uh, the Islamic Center at State Street, Masjid Dawood, gave birth to the Dalai Islam movement. 
Yasin Moss, uh, the Muslim Moss Incorporated, as Dr. Smalls said eloquently here last month, the Muslim Mosque Incorporated, starting by the posts, NOI, Al Hajj Malik Al Shabazz, Malcolm X, Rahmatullahi, and the people who were with him, that gave birth to MIB. And when you look around the country, the uh, first mosque of Cleveland under Imam Wali Akram, may Allah have mercy on him and reward him, that gave birth to Majdin Mukmini, the uh, Islamic revivalist movement, et cetera, in Cleveland. And they existed and were propagating Islam and the, the men were soldiering parallel to the Nation of Islam, like in Cleveland. Same thing here in New York. In New York, you had the Dollar Islam movement, you had MIB. And we were following the Sunnah right here, establishing massages, busting drug dealers upside the head, and all of that kind of stuff. All, all of that was part of establishing Islam in New York City, and at the same time that the Nation of Islam was doing what it did. So I just wanted to say that by way of introduction. Uh, Khalil Abdul Kabir is somebody who I personally have known since my beard was jet black and so is his. <laughs> okay, that's, that's how, you know what I mean? And we were... Uh, uh, and we both had afros. Okay, that's, I mean, that's how long he and I have known each other, and that's how long he and I have been working together. I mean, we, I've been working with this brother a long time, and we still work together. We're still working together right now. We are both uh, members of the uh, New York State um, Majin Sashura, that serves as endorsing body and monitoring for uh, the services to Muslims in the prisons of New York State. We're, 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 we serve together. In, in fact, uh, Imam Daoud Adeola, who's another one, by the way, we need to get him here to talk about, you know, Professor Ezeldeen, and the whole phenomenal, phenomena of uh, Jadabul Arabia in Buffalo. See, we, we need to get him because when you put all of this together, then you understand how uh, Dr. Amina Beverly McLeod, she writes in her book entitled African American Islam, that after the time of a Hajjimadika Shabazz, and after his martyrdom and everything that took place in the 1964-65, she says after that, there was an explosion of growth of Islam in the African American community. I mean, Islam took off, and we went from being in our case, in, you know, say an MIB case, I remember when I used to wear uh, like a Jalabia or something African style in the, um, let's see, I took Shahada in 1971. So I remember one day I'm on the subway, I'm coming to Juma. So you ever feel somebody looking at you? So I looked and here's an elderly African American church going woman. And she's looking at me, my long jollibee, you know, you know. And she's looking at me like, <laughs> look up and down, you know, like, Lord have mercy. What's wrong with this child? He here, he got a dress on. <laughs> you know, what kind of religion is this here? <laughs> yeah, you understand. So again, uh, uh, we, we, we are grateful to have Khalil, uh, Khalil Abdul Kabir, Imam. I'm going to turn it over to him, but I, I wanted to make the, you know, I always feel compelled when we have these lectures to frame them. It's important. You have to have a context. 
you know, where so that you understand what was going on, what's why why is it important? Why was the idea of Imam Abdul Khalik to have this lecture series? Why is it important? Yeah, it's important because without this lecture series, people will misunderstand the role of black folk in Islam and Islam in black folk. Because you can't go to NYU and learn that. You can't go to lectures at 96th Street and learn that. You can't even go to Masjid Taqwa and learn that. You understand, you, you gotta come to MIB. And MIB, as I always say, is the mosque of Islamic Brotherhood, not the men in black. And we were MIB before MIB was MIB. So we thank Allah, and let's give our attention now to uh, Imam Khalil Abdul-Kabir. Kabir! Kabir. Oh.